Let's see what the results say. Ooh, I'm negative. And uh, Alan is negative. Ooh. Well, looks like we're going to Korea. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you there. Why are you being nice to me? Stop being weird. Because I haven't seen you in two years and I haven't got to annoy you in two years. So it's been a year we're trying to make it to Korea to visit Alan's sister, Kayla. We finally made it, but we still had to do two PCR tests to get in. One before in Vietnam and the girl literally scratched our brains out, as you can see. Uh, the one we did when we arrived, we decided to do it directly at the airport because we just wanted to get it over with. And it was actually way cheaper than doing it in the city. Okay. Test number two done. My nose is on fire, but uh, it's done. But good trick if you actually need to take a PCR still when you go to Korea. Take it at the airport, it's 80,000 won. It's 80,000 won? Against like 130,000 when you go into the city. Yeah. All right, so when you arrive in Korea, you're gonna need to take out some cash in order to use the metro because all of the ticket machines there only accept cash. Um, you can buy a temporary transport card from the machine at the airport for a 501 deposit and you'll actually get that back when you return the card. You can also get a permanent T-Money card for 4K at uh, convenience stores like 7-Eleven, but keep in mind you will need cash in order to reload those as well. Once you get your ticket, you're gonna have to figure out how to use the metro in Korea. So keep with me here, because it's a bit complicated, but to find out which direction to go. Instead of looking at the last station, well, in Korea, you'll have to look at the next station on the line that's going in the direction you want to go. So basically, if you don't wanna spend like three billion neurons just download Neighbors, which is an app um, that all Korean use because Google Maps isn't that accurate in Korea. So another really cool thing that you can do in Korea is taking the bullet train. It gets you from one side of the country to the other in about two hours. Uh, we went to Busan for, for Kayla's birthday. We're gonna take the train to Busan. Oh, oh, French, oh, right? He said it. But we ended up just taking the regular train it was really comfy um, and it took us only about four and a half hours from Seoul all the way to Busan. It was about 40 euros per person, which is this many won. <laughs> to pay less, you can also choose uh, to get into the standing wagon. Uh, that's what we decided to do when we went to Daegu. The idea is simple, you get a ticket for cheaper, but you're not guaranteed to have a seat. It looked like that and we're really lucky because Alan rushed into it to get us seats. But keep in mind, it's literally war. Yeah, I did get punched a few times by some old Korean ladies. To save up some money, uh, coming back from Daegu, we also decided to try out the bus. Honestly, it was pretty cool. It was cheaper than the train, around 20 euros only. And it took us about the same time, so three hours. Honestly, worth it. Yeah, it was really spacious too. Ooh, look at that. That's awesome. Charlie's chill. Oh, and it goes back, it reclines all the way. If you like cafes, Korea is definitely the place for you. Seoul is full of themed cafes. We had to go every day to, to work. We just ended up going to a cafe right next to Kayla's apartment. Literally going to the cafe in Seoul is an activity itself. And one afternoon we decided to go to a cool place called Noldum Space. Uh, we'll link it in the description. It's located near the palace and its concept is pretty cool. You write a letter to yourself that will be sent to you a year from the day you write it. You can buy a letter set for 4K. Uh, you write whatever you want, you can put stickers, you even get to seal it with wax. And honestly, it was a really cool experience. And for an additional 1K, you can get your letter sent overseas. And so this is what we decided to do. Hey mom, you're gonna receive a letter. I don't know if we'll be there, but you'll receive it. So since we mostly stayed in Seoul, 
Uh, we spent quite a bit of time at the malls because the city has so many big ones. One of the ones we went to was called Lottie World Mall. Not sure how to say it. Uh, it's a really cool mall. We personally decided to just stick with escalator rides and then we had a really, really amazing lunch at the food court. Um, at this mall, they also have a lot of really cool shops. We just spent, we just spent way too much money at Lush. So, shout out to Lush. If you want to sponsor us, go ahead. We love your products. One of our favorite ones was the Ghibli store. You can go in there and check it out and take a ride in the cat bus. I'm going to be transported to my neighbor's house, Totoro. <laughs> <laughs> if you prefer books, uh, and really cool Insta stories. You could definitely check out the Starfield Library at the Coex Mall. This is one of the biggest malls of Seoul, and honestly, there's like a gazillion stores. And we might or might not have gotten lost once or twice trying to find the metro. <laughs> um, other than that, we decided to spend the afternoon at Olympic Park with Kayla. This is where Alan decided um, that renting one of those little carts would be a great idea. It was around 30k for six seaters for one hour, so about 20 euros. So we ended up taking a six person one so everybody can pedal. Because we're big boys. Yeah, because we wouldn't fit in this oh tiny gosh, ass one. I what? barely fit the... Yeah, me too, it's very low. This I'm too cool. short. <laughs> The park itself is just so cool. There's a lot of family chilling there, and what a great time just waving at everyone. But I'm not doing anything. And then on our very last day there, we decided to go visit the Korean War Memorial, and it was so, so good. Uh, the entrance is free, the place is crazy well thought out, inside and out. On the outside, you, you can see all the replica airplanes and boats from the war. Um, and inside, they have so many different exhibitions that you can walk through and see all the events that happened during the Korean War. And everything is translated into English as well. So, and it's really interactive, so definitely worth going. They say, our nation, our nation honors our sons and daughters who answered the call to dip in a country they never knew and people they never met. <sighs> I'm very much emotional person and I'm just reading that and it makes me want to cry. I'm crying. <laughs> if you know if you know me you know it's normal. <laughs> So one of our favorite things, well, at least mine, was the food in Korea. It's amazing, it's so good. We got to try a whole bunch of food. So much street food. Uh, we got, well, of course, you know, in all the restaurants, there is a little kimchi station where you can get some kimchi. Kimchi is so, so important in Korea that they even have a song, a Q4 Shinu song. <laughs> if there were no kimchi, what will we eat with rice? Any great uh, side dish, any great uh, seafood will try to seduce me, but I still feel empty without kimchi. And <laughs> all the kids were supposed to sing it before mealtime, for me, like in elementary school. So we go to school, we have like a food coming in, right, lunchtime, and then we have to sing that song before we get the kimchi and like the food oh and start God. eating. We have to say that, <laughs> sing that. <laughs> That's the kimchi song. And when we were in Busan, there was a lot of stalls mm. where you could get like fried seafood or corn dogs or basically everything you can think of. Or fresh seafood as well that is alive in front of you and then they just cook it right there for you. It's the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. What are they? They look like... We'll, we'll let you decide for yourself what these look like. <laughs> Other than that, uh, we got to try the seafood pancakes that you need to cut with scissors. Yeah. I'm trying to look at this camera. She's doing this. She's struggling because... But that's working. That's okay, you're doing great. They're just mean. <laughs> that was one of my favorites, honestly. We also did a Korean barbecue, which was... So good. Although you will probably get the meat sweats after. Uh, it was really good. Like you basically pick your cut of meat, mm. and then there's a salad bar. There's like a station for sauce, for rice, and you even get a ramen soup. So that was yeah. like that was great. Oh. 
Kayla's favorite because she loves desserts was the honey hot talk. It's like a little, it's called almost like an empanada, but it's got honey and sugar on the inside. It's very, very sweet, but it's really good. It's a really good dessert. It's too. Is it hot? It's real hot, it's real good. But it's not like good. One of the traders that we got to try was so big. It's basically soju, which is like a traditional Korean alcohol mixed with beer and also if you try that it's really good you you can't feel it but man you're gonna feel your hungover tomorrow <laughs> it's dangerous it sneaks up on you and then i think one of my personal favorites was this uh korean army stew um we even tried to stage a whole video of going to eat it with our friend shinu but uh the acting wasn't on par <laughs> as you can see here <laughs> that looks so good i want to eat that that's Korean army suit. Uh, actually, I'm craving that too right now. You want to go get some? Absolutely. <laughs> that was so natural. <laughs> That's so unnatural. <laughs> um, but basically, as he explained it, it was all the leftovers that they had during the war because there wasn't a lot of food. They just took all the leftovers, all of the hot dogs and meat and spam and and veggies and just threw them all into a big pot with ramen and of course because it's Korea they also mixed kimchi in there look at the taste look at the flavor <laughs> look at the smell you just cannot live without kimchi <laughs> uh, and then just mixed it up and ate it like that but yeah you can keep refilling your broth and just eat all day it was great that wasn't great for me because the broth is so spicy I couldn't <laughs> eat it but <laughs> I mean I guess it was really tasty if you wanna find really good restaurants in your area, we recommend downloading Mango Plate. So on Mango Plates, you have a lot of reviews. The menus also are up to date. And if you need to actually get the menu in English, uh, then you should download Papago. It's like the most up-to-date uh, English to Korean translating app. You can translate written text by taking pictures of it. So really, really cool when you need to translate a menu. Yeah. I guess we can say that we really enjoyed our trip in Korea. Yeah. It was really fun. It was a complete culture shock, honestly. Yes. Like, it was, yeah, it was nothing we ever experienced. Korea was like just next level. Like, they just started opening. It's not so tourist friendly, I guess, yet. Yeah, like Seoul is trying to open to tourists and tries to translate most things in English, mm -hmm. but, um, You'll, you'll find that mostly everything is written in Korean and not a lot of people actually speak English. Mm -hmm. So you need to learn a little bit of Korean, which we did, but it's not worth it for us to learn like more than like, right. Come the basics, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, thank you, hello, you don't you see you? <laughs> but other than that, like we really enjoyed it. Like people in general are kind. We hope you enjoyed the um, video and explanations and that you discovered a little bit of the culture through those shots <laughs> and we hope that maybe some of our tips help you out if you have any other tips that you recommend when when traveling through korea let us know put them in the comments below and like comment subscribe share all that good stuff mm -hmm. see you on the next one see ya